Thank you so much for tuning in today on this particular uh, morning conversation right here on Y254 TV. Thank you for sticking with us. This is your number one youth station, Y254. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming this show live through our website, and that is at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Now, my name is Ram Aguko, and this is power talk it's a pleasure being with you on this fine thursday morning remember i repeat of this show airs again every thursday at 10 p.m kenyan time hope that you will stick around for that repeat again tonight right here on power talk as always it is a pleasure being with you today let's talk about women empowerment today let's talk about youth empowerment today this particular individual just intrigues me by her story because this is her story today let's talk about how she survived cervical cancer is it possible i know there are many people who uh, get to you know worry how will i survive this is it possible once i get diagnosed with cancer is it a death sentence ladies and gentlemen as you've seen on your screen i'm introducing millicent kagonga she is the founder of the Symbol of Hope Warriors and a cervical cancer survivor. This is her story. Karibu sana, Millicent. Asante sana. Hope that you're feeling uh, energetic today. <laughs> of course, I'm feeling energetic and uh, I'm so strong and looking forward for encouraging, especially yeah, yeah. young youth outside there. Thank you so much for coming. I, I really appreciate it. On uh, uh, I know it's be, we have been planning this for a very long time, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I appreciate your, pre your presence here. And of course, I also appreciate you watching us from home. Surviving cervical cancer is the discussion that we are having today. I'd like to encourage you to join in on this discussion. Go to our Facebook page. The hashtag, as always, is Y in the morning on Twitter at Ram Maguko, which is my handle. Follow me on all social media platforms and at Y254 channel, which is the official station handle. Now, head over to our Facebook page. And, uh, but before you do that, like the page. And then you scroll down, you'll see our post there on our Facebook page. Like the page and then drop in your comments on the comment section below. Feel free to let us know where you are watching us from. This is Power Talk, and Power Talk starts now. Thank you so much, Millicent, for coming, as I said earlier on. Let me start from the beginning. How was it that you got to that point when you decided to go get tested, and then the results came out? Give me the journey from the beginning and how it started the point that you now got that doctor's report wow that's a good question i love that question um uh, my journey before i go to the doctor it took a time mm -hmm. and uh, i normally love to start where it really started mm -hmm. at the age of 14 i got my first born at the age of 16 i got my second born and the age of uh, 20 i got my third born wait 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hold the coffee. <laughs> what? Yes. And um, the reason why I normally start there is uh, one of the risks of uh, someone getting cervical cancer. Mm. It's uh, getting a child at early age or being um, sexual active at a younger age. For so women? Yes. There is a story. Wow. There is a story behind whereby I, would, I wouldn't love to talk about it, but... Mm -hmm. In short, that's mm. how I get my three children at mm. uh, the age of 20. Okay. But uh, at the age of 20, the, it was in 20, the year 2010. Mm. It's the same way I lost my second born at the age of four. Uh, and then I, lost, I also lost my marriage because of the signs and symptoms of cervical cancer. That is 2010? That is 2010. You lost your marriage and your second born? And my second born. Who was born. four years old? Yes. Paul Esana. Thank you. So... Uh, uh, the reason why uh, I lost my marriage is because of the abnormal discharge that I used to have and mention and a lot of means uh, that there is outside there. 
So I kept quiet for almost five years until I saw someone, a lady, talking on a television about signs and symptoms of, of cervical, cervical cancer. cancer. This was after 2010 or before 2010? Uh, after 2010. After 2010. So 2010 is the year I lost my marriage. Yeah, but yeah. I kept quiet for five years until 2015. So mm -hmm. uh, in this period, mm -hmm. I was having the abnormal discharge. And uh, it became heavier, heavier, and heavier to handle. If I would have to use a sanitary towels, uh, or one sanitary towel can only handle like an hour. Uh, an, hour an hour and the sanitary is full. But since I was living in Korogosho slum, I would. I wasn't able to afford the you sanitary afford towels, yeah. so I was using the rags to take off the discharge, and the wow. discharge was like daily, every time when I was sleeping, when I was standing, when I was walking. So the discharge was like abnormal. So, so did did you have um, when you say you are you are quiet for five years? What exactly do you mean? Um, you didn't have anyone to talk to. You, you, uh, I'm trying to get that that part. Some, someone was there to talk to, but uh, the advice from the person, you see, I needed someone at first not to judge me, at second to give me the right direction. So I was looking for people to tell them, but indirectly, like uh, the way we used to say, uh, you want to pass a message, but you don't want them to know it's, you, it's you who is going through the challenge. So I used to tell them, I have a friend who is having this and this and this, and they used to tell me, that is like a witchcraft. That is like this one. That is like uh, a cave. They would tell you it's witchcraft? Yes, yes. And uh, uh, I, I remember there is this lady who told me, tell that lady to go, and, to go for prayers because uh, she has wronged the Lord. So I felt like uh, not comfortable to tell someone it's me. The problem with, with, with people is that it's is, is, is exactly that. Yes. We are too judgy. We, 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 and and it, it's even worse when someone knows your background mm. And, and someone knows you and then they start telling you, you know what, I know you, 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 you've gone through this, you've gone through that, so you need to repent. Yes, and mostly in the community, you see, I lived in Korogosho and Korogosho is the slum where I, we were so poor. And by then we believed that if you are poor, you mm. can't have this chronic illness. So, uh, and now I, I know better because for those who call themselves poor, they, were not, they didn't have time to go to the hospital. And mm. why they are saying the, this is the richer people's sickness, it's because if you had money, you were able to go to the hospital and get the diagnosis. So the poor, uh, if the poor lost their loved one, mm. they normally say, like, it's a witchcraft. Someone bewitched him. So but, for, mm. but for this uh, mm. person who had some money to go to the hospital, they know the diagnosis. The pers their loved one died uh, because of cancer. They believe that cancer is a rich man's disease. Yes, by then. But now I've been able to change their mindset, most of them. Do you think that's still there, that, that judgy mindset, that poor man's mindset? Do you think maybe, that it's still there? Maybe from the provinces, from the villages, mm. uh, maybe there. But where I'm living, I've been able to create more awareness about it. And uh, even we have been able to stop the stigma where I live. It must have been a very difficult time all those f for those five good years. Yes. How was it trying to cope up? It was difficult. I felt like uh, I'm neglected and nobody loved me. And since I got my first born at young age and I have just lost a child and I'm having this abnormal discharge or abnormal situation mm. that I cannot speak outside there. And the few people that I'm trying to tell them, they are telling me like, uh, they are telling me like, I call it like satanic words. Satanic words. Yes, Th those are satanic words. What are they saying? What are they saying? How, yeah. how can you tell someone you are sick because it's a king from God? Or you are sick because you have been bewitched? Or you are sick because uh, you have wronged someone and that is a punishment? <laughs> Rather than telling the person you need to go to those people. Did, did, did you go to any spiritual leader? Any pastor? Yes. It must have been pushing you to go to for, for prayers. I did. I went for prayers. I went for fasting. I went, uh, I went for fasting even three weeks. I, I did my best. I prayed. Even uh, some few friends that uh, were close to me by then, mm. they saw me praying. I prayed. 
I prayed a lot, but I ended up going to the hospital. <laughs> okay, I still believe in God. <laughs> I'm not against uh, yeah. God. I still believe in God, and I still believe in miracles. But sometimes you just need to take a step. Sometimes you need to not be ignorant. Yes. And, 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 and take that bold step and go get checked out. Yes. And that is the challenges that makes us, uh, like in Kenya, uh, the statistics says that uh, we are losing more than nine women to cervical cancer per day. Wow. So uh, that is the reason why we are losing more women. Mm. Because some women, if, uh, if I can tell you, if you, can, you come to me and tell me my friend is having these signs and it's yourself going through those signs. Mm. And then I tell you it's uh, you are bewitched. Mm. You'll end up going for prayers and then doing a lot of things. But the, the, the thing you need to do is to go to the hospital and get checked. Get checked. Yes. W and when you are going for uh, spiritual uh, attention <laughs> for prayers um, because you said you are a believer you believe yes. in God yes um, what was the response of these men of God that uh, were praying and talking to you um, now going to church and you interacting with let's say for example a bishop a reverend or a pastor a women leader for example uh, maybe I can say uh, I'm not comfortable for now to speak about it. Okay. But if okay. I, c I can cut it in short. Yes. It reached, at, it reached a time I was chased out of a church. And then I can leave it that way. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Let's move on. No problem. No problem. I'm looking at the other women who are suffering out here. And they are struggling the way you did. It, it, it must have been an emotional psycho, an, an emotional merry-go-round, um, you know, losing marriage and, and, and a child and, and, and living, being excommunicated from a church. Um, what would be your message to that woman that is watching you today that, is, that could be going through the same thing that you're going, or even worse? How can they pull out? How can they be victorious? Uh, for the woman who is having these signs and symptoms, and uh, you have not gone to the hospital. Mm. Now, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of organization, a lot of uh, Minister of Health is doing it in a bigger way. So just go to the hospital. If you don't have the right person to speak to, mm -hmm. you can speak to me. And uh, uh, if I've, I haven't reached to you yet, just go to the hospital. Go to the hospital mm -hmm. and do the screening, mm -hmm. and you will know how to go it because. Uh, the, uh, you can't know you have cervical cancer until you have do done the diagnosis. You can have the same signs mm -hmm. and it might be the infection or it yeah. might be something else. But, but listen, I'm looking at also the emotional aspect of it. Um, how, can, how can a woman come out of, of, of that victorious and win at the end of the day? Because it, 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 it must be stressful. Yes, it is. Yeah. How, uh, what would be your message now to that woman now in terms of the emotions and trying to manage all these thoughts that are coming in and out of them? In terms of the emotions, I think you need to look for someone that you trust, whereby it's so difficult to find. Mm. And the only way to manage the emotions is to let them out so that you, you didn't have to end up doing something which is not good. Yeah. And... Um, Another thing, if you feel like you want to cry, just cry it cry. out. Just cry it out because that is the one thing that really helped me, helped me. Even when I was going through the treatment, I was crying a lot at uh, the corridors of Kenyatta, like everywhere. Mm. So if you feel like you want to cry, it's okay. It's, uh, crying doesn't mean you are weak. Mm. Crying means that you are strong and you are ready to, to fight or to attack the situation that you are going through. Wow. Wow. So now here, this is Millicent. All these signs and symptoms are, are, are there. Prayers, problems are coming here in, from church, problems are coming, are coming here in marriage, and now even children. Um, what happened next? So tell me what happened next now after, after that part. So uh, 
in 2015 I saw a lady mm. uh, talking on television like the way I'm talking mm -hmm. uh, about signs and uh, symptoms of cervical cancer. Yeah. And there were the same signs that I was going through. So I, I opened up to my boss. Uh, she was a lady and she had a lot of knowledge about, she, let, she had a little knowledge about cervical cancer. You told her what you're going through? Yes, and okay. she pushed me to go to the hospital the next day. She told me it might be cancer or infection, mm. but I told her I'm not having pain. I'm having pain like a little bit, but when it started, I didn't have pain. And she told me cancer doesn't have pain when it's starting. So I went to the first facility the next day and I was told like uh, I'm still young, I was 25 years by then. You are too young to have cervical cancer, it's infection. Uh, they gave me the antibiotics, I went with the antibiotics home, took after seven days. Uh, nothing happened, I went back to the chemist, she bought the same antibiotics. And still but nothing? Yes, nothing happened. At, at, at this time, um, you in your head, do you... Were you having the mind that you had cervical cancer or did you believe that you did not? When I, I heard the ladies talking about it, on TV, I went direct to the facility to ask for the screening. Mm -hmm. But they told me, we can't give you the screening, you are still young. So I was um. like 50-50. Now the doctor says, because most of us, we really believe what our doctors, our doctors are telling us. But there's something that I have seen on television. Mm -hmm. It's still it's in, still in your head. Yes. You cannot remove it from your head. Yes. So I went to an, another facility and I insisted. Mm -hmm. I told them, if you are not going to do the screening, then I'm not going to get out of here. You... <laughs> <laughs> You said I won't leave this hospital yes. until you screen me. Yes. And by then, because it was a missionary hospital, so the, the screening was a bit cheaper. By then, you, we, we were paying for the cervical cancer screening. So at that facility, it, it was a bit cheaper. So after insisting, I was, uh, the nurse told me, we, you, you will be the last person. And if someone comes in, they treat that person, they left me. Because they saw at my age, and uh, the way I'm telling them. So uh, when I went to do the screening, that was like a death sentence to me because I was 50-50 and I knew since uh, my level of the pocket, I can't have cancer mm. because I knew cancer belongs to someone else who is not me. And um, The rich. Yes. And when I went, mm -hmm. uh, I, pre I prepared myself, and uh, there is, uh, they normally use the something called speculum. So when they were trying to use the speculum to see the cervix, I had this a lot of clot of blood coming out, and they were shocked. And, at uh, that young age? Yes. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at uh, even as we, uh, we will come back there, let me take a few steps back. Um, is it... But right now, as 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 a cancer, uh, uh, you know, you're an advocate. Yes. You do cancer advocacy. Do you think that it was right for a doctor to tell you that we will not screen you because you're young? And was it also okay for them to skip you? Others come after you. They attend to them and still keep you waiting at the level where we are at today today i think if any anybody any woman even if they are 16 or 18 years i understand we have these guidelines but if you get any young lady who is uh, who she's also she's uh, already sexual active mm. she has a child and uh, maybe she can tell you let us say she's sexual active i think she needs to do the screening but uh, we have these guidelines that they are, they, our doctors are using. But for me, I think anyone who is sexual active needs the screening. They should be allowed to, to go for screening. Yes. Now let's move forward. You said now you are there, you are at this hospital. I know your heart is beating there. All things negative are running through your mind. Mm. You don't know what next. It's like death sentence yes and uh 
when they were trying to check the cervix, I had a lot of uh, clot of blood. It's like they were on the door knocking mm. and they wanted someone to open the door for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had this a lot of blood and uh, they told me, Milson, we are sorry. I'm still on the bed. Milson, we are sorry. They're saying you are sorry. Uh, they, they told <laughs> it must be devastating. Yes. We are sorry, Millicent, because the blood was a lot. Mm -hmm. Even the nurse got uh, a little bit of blood on the top. And uh, she said, Millicent, we are sorry. You have cervical cancer, stage four. And uh, they tried to show me, when you go to do the screening, and uh, they have these, uh, the normal cervix, the cancerous cervix, the stage one, two, three. And they told me, yours is here. Stage so, four. Yes, at that moment, that is not a kind of photo that I, w I really wanted to see. Because you can imagine they are showing you yours is here, and uh, that part looks like it's rotten. And uh, you can imagine, am I the one who has the same thing that they are telling me or no? Shouldn't they have prepared you for this kind yes, of report yes. or something? They could have prepared me or maybe, sh maybe hugged me, because mm -hmm. hug speaks a lot. Just and hugging and talking, yes. cancelling in uh, a way. Telling me first it's well before they tell me you have cancer. Or maybe they can have been, took me to a different room. So that they tell me, not when I was on the bed. I fainted like I died. I you died fainted? Like, like maybe I, I could have been in heaven by that moment. <laughs> but I came back. And they were still holding the papers, talking a lot of English. How can we do? And uh, they really said a lot of stories. And then they gave me the referral. They were two. They gave me the referral to go to the higher facility to do some more tests before I do the treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should, we should have... We should have <laughs> a better way of handling uh, bad news or, or relaying bad news uh, huh? or actually we can use another survivor to be the ones breaking the news or when the doctor is wants to break the news they can have a survivor there to encourage them to talk them to prepare them mentally yeah. and then doctor comes to break but, the news. but but not doing it while you're on the uh, on, on that table on that table and then they are on azama kizungu mingi that's uh, like i have never seen you see the conversation was i've never seen something like this and she's yeah. still young how come uh, at first so they now they're talking among themselves yes and they thought i can't hear english so because you're from Korokocha or, or, or what? Oh, from from Korokocha, by then I didn't know how to speak in English. Wow. I'm a closet liver. <laughs> Look at you now. Look at you now. Look at me. <laughs> what? Yes, by then I didn't know. Did they... Melissa, you're a strong woman. Yes, I am. So now, they had to remove you from that table now. W w what happened next? Uh, um, uh, how, how was they, it? Because now you're, you're, you're fainted. They gave me a sanitary and they told me, Shukachini, like, come down. And then um, they gave me the referral uh -huh. and they told me to go to a national hospital so yeah. that I can do some more tests. So when I was coming out from the, the facility, I was crying. Even the, there is this man who thought like uh, maybe my husband has beaten me, and uh, he was asking me, "Kwani mwana kwa mekuchapa?" And uh, I was just crying. At first, I I told myself maybe I can go to the road and uh, commit suicide by road accident, but I remembered my kids, and since I was raised up by a stepmom. Mm. I told myself, I can't die and leave my kids. Maybe I can just prepare myself and go to where my kids are and kill them and kill myself. And um, I thank for my boss because I called her. And she told me, how did it went? I told her, it's, uh, they are telling me I have cancer stage four and I need to go to the hospital. She told me, where are you? Just stand there, I'm coming. She came for me. And uh, she tried her best to talk to me, but it was like, no. 
she helped me with the insurance, I get the national insurance, she paid the whole year, she's still the one who pays for my insurance, and then she told me to go to the national facility to see what is going to, what uh, the doctors are going to tell me. And when I went to the national facility, by then we had a lot of queue. Now we don't, we don't have queue. But by then I was told you need to look for 13,000 and you need to come next year at a time like this. So we need to book you. So it wow. was harsh, it was devastated, mm. it was... Uh, it was like part of me is already dead and uh, I wasn't ready for it because I thought like, like everyone, when I normally talk to other cancer patients newly diagnosed, I was thinking like this cancer is for my neighbor, not for me. Not for me. So now I have it and uh, hmm. I didn't had any hope. I knew like I'm, I'm going to die the next minute. All hope was gone. All hope was gone. And, and, and what about family and friends? What about anybody close? Did you have anyone close to you who could be there for you at that wow. time? In my journey, um, some of the members of my family thought like, they were like me. They thought I'm going to die the next minute. Some said I need to go home and wait for my day. And... Uh, some, like in short, I can say I was helped in my journey by the strangers and uh, my fellow cancer survivors, my wow. fellow cancer patient. Because I, was, I got my treatment at in, in 2017. Mm. I was diagnosed in 2015. The two years gap, I was in prayers, uh, adding more prayers, <laughs> looking for the kinyages, the traditional treatment. But uh, when I decided to do my treatment in 2017, I was among the people who were aired on a national television who were sleeping on the corridors of Kenyatta for the lack of transport, for the lack of food. But I'm glad I did the treatment and I'm glad I went to the hospital wow. because maybe a Millicent uh, now could have been a history. Wow. Yes. Man, that's that's that, that's something. I'm 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 trying to wrap my head around around what you're saying there, and uh, I'm 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 seeing this this woman who has expectations of the future. There's something you are looking forward to, and right now you are at that point where everything is black no future no hope no love no family no friends those who are there for you are actually strangers i want you to talk to somebody today um, who is watching you and everyone has left them no one is by their side their husbands have left their wives have left the children the family friends have left and they have no hope what what would be your word to them, coming from someone who has gone through it? Wow. I'm trying my best not to ruin my makeup. <laughs> 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 so I would love to tell them there is light after the darkness. You can see yourself crawling in darkness, but I assure you, there is light. Uh, in, uh, the other week I was at uh, the national facility encouraging the newly diagnosed and I told them, now I have changed my prayer. Um, back then I was crying to God, why me, why me? But now uh, I've changed my prayer to tell God, thank you for giving me cancer. Thank you. Because cervical cancer has given me some opportunities so the challenge that you are going through, it doesn't matter which challenge, but just know that there is some light somewhere. Mm. Yes, uh, having these suicidal thoughts are normal, 
but make sure after having those thoughts, don't do it. Because your community needs you. You are the only person that can help someone. Because if I could have been committed suicide, um, I'm holding a lot of women in my hands. Even I'm staying with some of them in my house. So who, who could have been able to do that? So don't give up. Don't lose up. Mm. Continue fighting. Continue pressing on. And one day, you'll be a testimony to your community. Just and as you'll you be are. a blessing to your family. Just as you are. Yes. A testimony and a blessing. Yes. A pillar for somebody. Wow. Melissa, the... At that point, before, before you, you know, you, you get this, this, um, these thoughts in your head. Um, what are some of those? Were, were you having those regrets at at that time? Were you were you having doubts and regrets and and and? Things you felt like you were, you started to to hate. I'm I'm trying to get into the mind of Millicent, who is at this hospital right now. What was going through her mind? By then, I hated myself first. You hated yourself. Yes, I hated myself first, and uh, maybe I can use this opportunity to change how the doctors speak on our, our on our national media. Mm. about cervical cancer because yeah. the, when they were saying about uh, the risk of getting cervical cancer most of them most of them you'll hear them saying uh, if you have multiple men and uh, if a doctor uh, goes on national media and say if you have a multiple men you'll get cervical cancer mm. and for me I was a young woman who has who had a man at young age, and mm. that is one of the risks. Mm. That is leading for a lot of women see you like a taboo. There's that and stigma. Yes, and each time you tell someone you have cervical cancer, they'll start saying you are a prostitute, or you have multiple men, and that's why you get cervical cancer, which is not. Maybe it can be, uh, they can say something else, they can look how they can talk about it, but not that message. So that is one of the challenges that I went through. Because they, they, they were telling you that you must have been yes. with many men. Yes, and even my own husband. Because we saw it somewhere. Your own husband said it to you. Yes. And uh, a lot of, uh, uh, that is one of the things that made me hate myself. Because if someone can tell you, or um, if my, my children can see such an information on a, on a national television, it will be so difficult to handle them or to speak to them. So it was, uh, it was hectic in mindset. Mm, and uh, mm, some mm. of the bitterness in me, I poured it on my children. Okay. Yes. How? Yes, I really wanted them to have a good life, but when I was in this pain, mm. I felt like maybe they are the ones who are making me to have this pain. And uh, if my kids mm. do something, maybe a little mistake, I will mm. beat them to death. It really annoyed you? Yes. So because I didn't have someone to pour this uh, bitterness or to tell them the angry, how angry I am. So everything that I collected, I poured it my children and that is what is happening with a lot of women outside there <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> that's happening to everyone it is so some children they, they end up getting beaten up black and blue but, but uh, the problem is not them it's the yes. stress the parent is going through yes and uh, after doing my treatment and knowing more and getting love from my fellow cancer patient uh, when we were sleeping together. At the hospital? Yes. Oh. I was able to go back to my kids and uh, apologize for them because uh, I wanted a good connection between me and my children. And they were there. They were the only people who doesn't have a place to go when I was on treatment. So they must be there. When I was having these um, 
heavy bleeding, when I was getting the stigma from the plot where I was living, not to share one toilet with them, they were there. They were the ones who were taking care of the, the waste on, in the bucket. So after my treatment, I went back wow. to them. And even when I, be, I used to beat them very bad, they didn't have a place to go. They stayed there with me. You have strong kids. They are. And uh, they are like, uh, my kids are the ones who are giving hope to fight and to continue uh, talking about cancer. And now I'm so open enough, they know anything about their mother. But I thank God the older one is, is now 18 years. Mm. Wow. Wow. 18. Mm. You apologized to your... You know one thing that makes me... Make, <laughs> starting out is you apologized to your children. Yes. Parents rarely do that. Uh, and an African parent normally thinks like if you apologize to your children, it's a curse. But by no. Healing starts from accepting your mistake. So if you accept your mistake, then you have started healing. I want us to take a short break, Millicent. Okay. Let's take a short break. Uh, and, and after this, I want us to now tackle the journey now after. Now the diagnosis. Okay. After the results. After those things that came running through your head. Now what happened next? How did you survive this? How did you come out? I love it that the fact that we are talking about it and you're smiling on your face. There's a smile on your face because now the, the hope that was lost then has been renewed. It has been found. How did you manage to do that? How did you manage to put a smile on your face after going through all that? I want us to, to, to talk about that after this break. Oh, okay? Yes. yes. Thank you so much for, 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 for that touching story. I, I don't know if you have been touched like I have been. We're taking a short break, but keep talking to us and let it, letting us know where you're watching us from. Uh, tell us what you think about Millicent's story. What do you think about it? The hashtag is Power Talk Show at Ram Aguko, which is my handle, and at Y254 Channel, the official station handle. We are going to come back with the story of Millicent, how she survived cervical cancer. Her story right here on Power Talk. Welcome back. This is Power Talk. Thank you so much for sticking with us. I can see many people are talking to, uh, to us today. Uh, there's someone who has just sent me a text. Yeah, is, is this David? Uh, David and some, I'm enjoying your interview. Good job, my brother. Thank you so much, David, for, 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 for that. I appreciate your presence. And of course, uh, Timothy, if you have those uh, feed on Facebook, you can bring them up and then we shall continue with this uh, uh, discussion right here. I am with Millicent here. This is her story. Uh, surviving cervical cancer is uh, the discussion today on Power Talk. It's a pleasure being with you. Remember the hashtag as always is the Power Talk show on Twitter at Ramaguko, my handle at Y254 channel, which is the official station handle. Millicent. Yes. You're a strong woman. I will, know, I will keep on saying that through this show. <laughs> I know. Ah, <laughs> my God. Mungo ni nani. Let me ask you now. Tell me the journey now. From that time when now you've been diagnosed now. Let's pick it up from the time now you... you I, I don't know if you're still in hospital or you're leaving hospital or you're, you, you know, you're, you're still sticking around that place of visiting. I don't know. How was it after that? Okay, when I went uh, to the hospital after doing my biopsy test, because mm. each cancer you must do the biopsy mm. so that you can continue the treatment, I went, um, uh, my doctor told me to do the cycles of chemotherapy, uh, six cycles, and uh, do 25 cycles of radiotherapy and uh, three cycles of brachytherapy. Mm. So uh, by then, I had an issue of uh, my blood count. So each time... Getting blood was a challenge. I, before I started the treatment, I was told you, you don't have enough, enough blood to handle the treatment. So oh, I went... Because of the previous you know, uh, experience uh, uh, yes. that you had. Yes, and heavy yeah. bleeding, which mm. is uh, 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 one of the signs, signs of cervical yeah, cancer. Yeah, yeah. So I went to the facility, I got uh, blood transfusion, and I went back for my treatment. So in 2017 alone, I got uh, 14 pints of blood. 
and um, I wasn't able to f do all the chemotherapy by then because of uh, before you do the chemotherapy, you need to do the blood works, whereby mm. even getting the, that money for blood work was a challenge. And uh, when I was going from the treatment, uh, you see, when uh, by now, uh, nowadays, if you are newly diagnosed, they walk you through the journey. They tell you, you will do this, and after this long, you will do this, and you will have this uh, side effect. Mm. But for me, I was not told at my days. So uh, after, doing, uh, after doing the first uh, treatment, the cervical cancer treatment needs to take around 52 days, but for me, it took like six months because of uh, being mm. admitted for blood works, uh, for blood transfusion and coming back for the treatment. And mm -hmm. um, after finishing the first, uh, the radiotherapy and chemotherapy, I, d I only did three cycles mm -hmm. instead of six. Yeah. So I went for the brachytherapy and by then I started having these uh, signs of uh, early menopause and I didn't know anything about menopause. I was young. Uh, I was 28 years. Mm. So I went to the facility and asked, uh, um, I told them I'm having, uh, I feel like cancer has come back, but now cancer is in my skin and in my chest. And um, what, what, what do you mean? Um, you, 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 you Because of the signs. So the doctors asked me, what do you mean the way you're asking? And I told them <laughs> I'm having this hotness on my skin uh. and I'm having this uh, jotto, a lot of jotto, and um, I'm having the pain in my chest. And they started laughing. And uh, they told, uh, they started telling each one, uh, uh, it, that might be the early menopause. So they told me it's normal. Mm. I didn't know. And uh, one of my cries that, I wish my doctor could have told me anything that I need to, do, to know. Even if it might be piece by piece, like preparing me after this, you are going to have this one. After this, you are going to have this one. You well, they, could have, they, they could have taken you through the steps that you were going to make. Yes. Instead, uh, you they are left going you to out. Have they left you alone. Yes. And uh, I don't know if uh, we have the kids who are watching because... I would have loved to say something oh, no, for, for, for the patient, and uh, maybe okay. Let me see. Uh, maybe you, you you can find a way of of, of phrasing yes, it. Yes. Uh, one of the side effects of the treatment. Mm. We have a lot of effect uh, side effect of the treatment mm -hmm. uh, of, of the patient who is going through cervical cancer. We have this early menopause. We have this um, getting fat like I am, mm -hmm. and uh, we have. Um, Oh, we have this, uh, okay, I don't know how to put or, it, or but put it, putting it. you can't have, you won't be able to be, to get intimacy, maybe. Uh, yeah, you cannot yes, engage af uh, yes. after, after that. After, okay, you can, mm. you can if you have been told what to do when you're on the treatment, but if you haven't been told, mm. you'll end up having like a, uh, that part will be close, like uh, you can't. You can't do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that was w w one, one big challenge that was yes. there. Yes, but uh, we have these steps that you need to use. But I'm glad nowadays uh, mm. the doctors at Kenyatta are guiding the women, whereby uh, I, can I can say we are not there, but they are telling them how to handle the situation. Yeah. And... Uh, in Kenya, maybe our Minister of Health need, need to create more awareness about that and also to bring dilators for cervical cancer patients when they are going through the... Yeah, the, the Minister needs to, to do that. Huh? Yes, the yes. Minister needs to do that because we don't have... Unless you are being treated on, uh, on our private facilities, they have them. Uh, but uh -huh. on our government facilities, instead, instead of dilators, they're telling you to use some other things. So, but, but now how did Millicent survive cervical cancer? Because now this is where the <laughs> things get stony or uh, rough here. How did, how did you survive now? Uh, at first I can say I survived because, maybe I can say I survived, because if I can say I was praying, we mm. have those patients who have been praying and they are normal. 
if I can say I went to the treatment, we have those patients who have been to good hospitals and, and they are normal. normal. Yeah. So I just survived. Yes, but... Uh, you can say it's a bit of both. Yes, it's a bit of both. And um, I'm too careful when I'm, when I'm saying this because I've met, I've met women of God who have done everything they have. They have even the orphanages, but they have lost the battles. So I normally love to be so sensitive. And um, I survived because I needed to help someone. Someone needed to hear my story so that they can go to the hospital. And uh, I needed to encourage newly diagnosed. And I also needed to talk to our government and to talk to the guardians, any guardians out there, any lady outside there, about more about screening HPV vaccine, mm -hmm. and also to talk to the government about the, to walk the journey with the survivors. Now, now that you've mentioned that, on that point, this is the opportunity. You have the ability to, if you had that ability to, to speak to the government, your call to action, your, your prayer, your request, what you would like them to do, what would that message be? That's your camera. Talk to them. Well, to our government or to my government, mm. uh, now treating cervical cancer has been too expensive and we are losing more women. We can't just stay there and say, uh, in Kenya we lose uh, more than nine women per day. We can't just stay there and continue t telling out the story. That is a negative story. And we can't just stay there and say, like we are diagnosing this, uh, this number of women each day. Whereby we are losing more women who have not yet been diagnosed because of the high, the high payment of the diagnosis. The biopsy is too expensive. And uh, after the diagnosis and also the treatment, um, like right now the NHIF, the National Insurance Fund, is paying only for the uh, 20 cycles of radiotherapy. And you have this poor millicent from the village uh, who needs to do 25 cycles. And uh, the same millicent needs to do the brachytherapy. Brachytherapy is 40,000 per session. And the patient needs 120, uh, mm. 20, uh, 120 shillings Kenyan, Kenyan money to do all of the three cycles. So we need to do something. Maybe we need to make the treatment like free for our women and also after the treatment we have survivors the government needs to show us to show people like us who have been survived through cancer they need to talk to us they need to encourage us and mostly they need to put us there when they are breaking the message to the cancer uh, to the newly cancer patient so that is the biggest aim and when the policy makers are uh, doing their thing making the making the, uh, doing the policy makers, we need to be there so that, like I, we say, nothing for us without us. And no man should die of cervical cancer because we have the information and we can give them. Mm. Doctors went mm. to school and for us, we went through the journey. We have the experience mm. that we went through. Wow. So wow. we need to be on the table. You, you need to be on the decision-making table. Yes, we need to be on the decision-making table. Mm. At the end of the day, everyone has a role to play. Yes. You feel like cancer treatment should be made free? It should be made free because I can tell you and I can testify to you, mm. we are losing more cancer that those cancer patients who have not been diagnosed because they went to the facility and they were told you need to have like 40,000 shillings for the biopsy, only a test. That's the test. We normally call it uh, satanic numbers, satanic figures. Because if you come to me, even now, uh, now food is too expensive. Mm. If you come to me, you need to do the biopsy, and I tell you you need to bring this amount to do the biopsy, you'll end up giving up. So we are losing more women, let alone the, the ones we were told, nine women. Those mm. have already done the biopsy. What about those who haven't done? Those who come from poor families, those yes. who come from the slums, yes. from the villages, from the parts of the country where there is no sufficient medical uh, attention that can be taken to those regions. People are dying. 
people are dying. Even uh, we, are, we have screening like everywhere. Uh, and after when the woman goes for the cervical cancer screening, and they were told you have this, you have positive, uh, they normally call it suspicious. You have suspicious cancer. Those women who are not, uh, most of them are not able to continue. They stay at home and they wait for their days to die. Whereby, I don't like it. Wow. Let me, let me get it from you. Um, this is Millicent after diagnosis. This is Millicent now going home. How was life now coping up, interacting with people? I am reminded of what you said earlier, where you said that those who were there for you were not family and friends. They were strangers and your fellow cancer patients. Now, this is Millicent who has now left the hospital and is now starting this what I call a new normal. How was it? Um, it was amazing. I was like uh, anyone hel else who wished to finish the treatment and go back to uh, do their normal doing. Mm. Before the treatment, the cancer thing, I used to wash people's clothes. But now I'm back home, I can't do that because of my back and uh, because of the side effect that I'm having. Mm. So when I went back home, I told myself, I just want to change, to give up. At the facility that I was getting the treatment, we had a, lot, a long process for you to get treated. You need to go from this office to that office, mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. this office to that office. Mm -hmm. But now they are, doing, uh, they are doing well. So I started by going to the Kenyatta National Hospital and to show them the direction, to show the patient the direction. And each time I saw the patient sitting down mm. and crying, I mm. went to them and asked them what is the problem. You, you are going to, you are going back to hospital? Yes. Was, was, was anyone calling you back? No, was, no, no, no. I was going there by myself. And, and you would do it, you will spend the whole day in hospital? Yes. Just to show them the direction, to talk, the, to, talk to them, to tell them, I have just finished my treatment and you can do it. Because I knew that is where I'm going to get courage to continue with the life. And I knew someone else has impacted in me. There is hope. Someone has hugged. Because there is this time I was crying on the queue. At, um, at the, when I was waiting for my turn to do the radio, radiotherapy. And uh, my fellow cancer patient asked me, what is the problem? I told them, I told her, I'm crying because I have kids. I can't go back for my kids. I don't. I told her like everything. My mother, my my father said this. My friend said this. My pastor said this. And she told me, "I'm glad you have been able to speak it." Wow. Have you eaten? Do you want something to eat? And he gave me. She gave me food. So most of the things that we want, <laughs> we just want someone to listen to us. We need someone to talk to. <laughs> and to be there. Not really talking, but uh, to listening. To listen. Yes. Whereby it's rare to find someone to listen to you. And, 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 and you found someone who could listen to you. And you said, you know what? I'll be doing this every single time. Yes. How did you end up advocating for HPV? Uh, it's because I started being, I started, uh, where I was living in Kariobanga, I received a lot of stigma. So I shifted from another plot, but inside Kariobangi, and my biggest aim was to stop stigma there in Kariobangi. So I started telling women in the facility, I went there myself. I went there and started telling women, have you, get, have you gone for the screening? Uh, you need... Uh, you need to get screened. And I heard one day uh, on our national media saying like, uh, uh, we are having this uh, HPV vaccine launch. And mm. I told myself, I wanted that for my daughter. Mm -hmm. And by then they were only vaccinating a 10 year old girl and my daughter was 10 years. And uh, when the vaccine was being launched nationally, uh, they asked me if I want my daughter to be vaccinated, I told them, that's what I really wanted for my daughter. Yeah. And I wanted my daughter to be the first one, and I'm glad she was. She was wow. the first one. 
and wow. uh, yeah, it was, was it was one. it was a presidential launch mm -hmm. and uh, my daughter she was the first one to be vaccinated and uh, i felt like i've achieved or i've been i uh, i have given my daughter the best because preventing her from what i've been through it was the best gift i can give my daughter how were you able to convince her to was, was she afraid? Um, I, I, I know a ten-year-old person can have so many questions to ask. Unless uh, was it was it was it difficult for you? I'm a on a one year twenty twenty. You just no, no, like, let's no. go. We are going. Remember, uh, Korogoshi is a ghetto. Yes. And uh, as starting from a seven-year-old, uh, they know a lot. And uh, my daughter saw me what I was going through. And when I saw. Uh, the government talking about uh, the HPV vaccine. Mm. I told her, would you love to get the vaccine? Or do you want to go through what I went through? And since she saw it, mm. she told me, no, ma'am, I want to get that vaccine. Ah. Yes. And uh, it is the best gift that a mother can give or a guardian can give to her daughter. And that's what parents need to do. Yes. Everyone needs to make sure. Now, uh, the vaccine, uh, remember the vaccine is free. Uh -huh. And before the, the government launched the free vaccine, the vaccine was there. But they were paying a lot of money to vaccine their girls. And right now it's free? Yes, right now it's free on any government facility. The vaccine is free and now they are vac vaccinating a 10 to 14 year old girls. It's free and uh, uh, it, because it is in two doses. You get the first, the first dose and then the second dose the girl gets after six months. So parents, if you are a parent, these are things you need to do. Sindio? Yes. Do you love your daughter? <laughs> or do you want in the next uh, 20 or 25 years later, your daughter come to you and ask you, why did you protect me? Or you, you have an authority. Or you, or, or, you, or you still have that mentality that, that these are rich men's problems. Wow. That's a no... <laughs> <laughs> huh? do, do you love your daughter or do you, do you have that mentality that is a rich man's problem? Yes. Or do you want your daughter to come to you? Mm -hmm. Do you want your daughter to lose their marriage? Do you, learn, do you want their, your daughter to lose their future because of cancer? Because when you get cervical cancer, uh, you stay away, uh, you lose your vision. And um, if you wanted to do something, you can't do it. You need to focus on the treatment. The treatment is too expensive. The treatment is too hectic. And uh, just make sure you have protected your daughter. If you are listening to this voice, make sure you have protected your daughter. Take care to get the free vaccine and uh, you will be so thankful. My daughter, she's well. Uh -huh. She did the vaccine. Uh -huh. She's now 13 years. Wow. I, I want you to talk to the men. Let's empower even our men here today, Millicent. Because there is a man who is watching. There are men who are watching. In fact, are, I'm seeing even some comments from men. Wow. It's not right that a man would think of leaving the marriage because the wife has cervical cancer now. <laughs> it's because of this stigmatization that is there, this mentality that is there. I want you to talk to the men who are watching you today. It happens uh, to the men. At first, if you can afford to vaccinate your boy child, because even boys can get vaccine. Yeah. But now uh, it's uh, for a fee. You need to pay for it. But uh, for the man, like uh, I have done my, I have did my personal research, and uh, out of a hundred, only ten percent of women stay there w with the women in the period of cancer. Ten percent of, of of men. Yes. But most Stay of, with their women. Yes, when they mm. have cervical cancer. Yeah. But most of them, wanakanyaga kubwa kubwa, we call it wanakanyaga kubwa kubwa wakienda. But few of them, mm. I've, I've met with them. I've met with men who has been there for their wives, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, which is uh, amazing. Let's talk about first the 10% that have decided to stick with their wives, with their women, through this part. Your message to the 10%. Let's talk about that first. Thank you very much for being there for your wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are the ones to maybe give us hope 
for those uh, uh, the men <laughs> for, for the women that the men's kanyagad kubwa kubwa. You are giving us hope that like we have good men outside there. And but good men still exist. Yes, good men still exist. And uh, thank you so much. You are doing a good job. Continue walking the journey with your woman. And uh, you will live a happy marriage. And you are making a good, uh, a good gesture to your mm -hmm. boys and your girls. And it does not make you less of a man. Yes. It does make you less of a man. I've You're met them. The Even mm -hmm. I have met with one man who... I hosted uh, with uh, with his wife. Mm. That man, the f he lost the first wife to cervical cancer, and now this is the second wife, and the second wife has cervical cancer. But he was taking care of her, <sighs> her woman. Mm. Like this is my this is my wife. He accompanied her at the hospital. He washed the clothes. He did like everything. He fight for her, her lady. Would you like to pass a message to the 90 percent? To the 90 percent. When you're like a nigger, kubwa kubwa. Continue. Kaiende <laughs> kaiende. <laughs> for the 90 percent of women, uh -huh. uh, for the men, uh -huh. just know that you are running away from the problem. What Face if, your problem. What if you are going to get the same problem? Mm. And know that. That woman who has cervical cancer might, maybe, maybe she had uh, multiple men, but maybe not. Maybe because men are the carriers. Maybe you are the one who brought the problem to her. So if you are running away, know that where you are going, maybe you are going to put another problem there. Please be there for your woman. Mm. You married that woman from love. Be there for her take care of her, walk the journey together, accompany her at the hospital. And uh, it doesn't make you a less man because you have stood with your, your lady. So, wow. And maybe you have kids. What do you want your daughter to be treated? If you are treating, you are treating someone, someone's daughter that way. So make sure you are, you are there. You need to be there. I want, uh, Millicent, l l allow me to go to Facebook and uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm starting with Facebook and then uh, Timothy will bring me up Twitter. Let me read Facebook. This is Fe Feminist Mbone. He's saying he's, uh, he's, uh, this is, uh, he, he's tuned in from Gong, Asanda Sana. Shinyabi Hillary. He's saying, watching you live from Kakamega, I love that story. The story is so touching with a lot of moral lessons. Wow. Thank you. This is Maurice Jacob Makoha. He's saying, tuned in and watching from Kaka Mega na, na Mushia Kabras. Thank you so much. So those are uh, comments on Facebook. Let, let me go head over to Twitter. We have them? All right. So this is uh, Mishieka Eno Kanasama, an inspiring and resilient story. Thank you so much, Mishi, Mishieka. This is uh, uh, Kevin Odongo. Gentlemen, tuned in from Asembo Rarieda, Asante Nisana. And of course, uh, these are just some of the comments that, are, that, that you've received today. Let me read one. This is uh, some, someone that sent me. Uh, this is uh, David and someone joining the, the show. I'm very grateful for our sister. She's encouraging many people. Tell her God is in control uh, of every situation that we face. I'm also thankful for you for always looking for people like her. Yeah, God is in control. Thank you so much. Yeah? Thank you. Mm. Wow. Um, I want us to bring this discussion to a close. I don't know if there's anything that you've left out, but I want to give you time to have a final word and talk to your people. What would be your parting shot, Millicent? That is your comment. I want to encourage all women to go and get screening. And uh, it's good to do the pap smear every year. Yes, the screening is uh, uncomfortable because you, know you need to do some things. But that five minutes could have saved my life. So you need to go and do the screening. It's so important. And for the men outside there, accompany your women and encourage them to go and do the screening. We have another community who we are losing a lot because of the religious. Please, our Islam community, encourage our women to go and get screening because we are losing more 
women from our Islam community because of our religion. Yes, we need to take over our religion, but we also need to take over our lives. And uh, for any guardian outside there, make sure you have vaccinated your daughter. Protect your daughter. The vaccine is safe, and my daughter did the, uh, got the vaccine, both of them, and she's good. And I'm glad I've protected my daughter. So make sure you have protected your daughter. For the women who have been just told you have cervical cancer, I'm here. I'm your sister. I'm your mother. Feel free to contact me on our social media. Uh, Millicent Kagonga, symbol of, or you can check our Facebook page, symbol of hope warriors. I will talk to you and I will guide you. Cervical cancer can be treated. No woman should die of cervical cancer. Yes, maybe you know your neighbor died of cervical cancer and that is worrying you. Not that you are, from today, not that you are different from your neighbor. Go to the hospital, do that treatment, do chemotherapy, and uh, if you can't afford the treatment, speak out. There is someone who is outside there can take off the treatment. I've seen some of the people getting the treatment with zero money because a sister or a brother paid for the treatment. So don't just shut your dreams and cry because you have been told you have cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. For the survivors, we need you. You are the voice of the community. Speak about your journey. Encourage more women. And uh, be the voice, be the advocate, so that you can be known because your story is powerful. Thank you. Wow. That is Millicent Kagonga, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. So inspiring, Millicent. Thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, I, know, I, I know that God is with you. I mean, he has proven time and time again that he is with you. Thank you so much for sticking with us and for sharing, us, uh, sh sharing with us your story. I wish you the best. Asante sana. Asante. Uh, we uh, we uh, would like to say that brings us to the end of this morning discussion right here on uh, this uh, discussion concerning her story. This is Millicent's story. But before we do that, I love how she's behaving. She's smiling. It, it, regardless of what she has gone through, she is smiling. Yeah. Thank you so much, Millicent. And uh, that is what brings us to a quote of the day. Laughter is proof that we are still alive. Proof that our misfortunes will not define us for the rest of our lives. Laughter is the survivor's language. I love it. You love it. Thank you so much. And that brings us to the end of this morning discussion right here. My name is Ram Maguko. This is Power Talk.